This is Sergio from Cage Side Press. I am super excited to be talking to Alexander Martinez, who, who fights uh, Anthony Pettit on June 10th. He has uh, just entered the PFL bubble, and uh, he's taking some time to speak with me today. So how are you doing? Doing very good, man. Yeah, excited, you know. Now, today, I'm, I'm uh, in the quarantine, I guess, in the quarantine bubble. So one day, we got to stay in a room. But uh, it's, it's good, man. It's exciting. Um, I'm here now. We were talking a little bit before uh, before I hit record, and uh, last time we spoke was back in December. Um, you were in Mexico competing for Icon, and uh, man, in six months here you are. It's uh, it's crazy how quickly uh, quickly things progress. But I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, I guess the fact that you got signed to PFL so quickly. You took mm -hmm. the fight on short notice, and here you are. So how did that come about? How did you get the uh, the notice that you were the one that uh, they were calling to ask to step in? Yeah, um, you know, like you said, things went very fast, you know, even till not too long ago, I was still like trying to like, how you say, um, almost like a little bit lost in the clouds because I wasn't sure what was going on, you know, things were going so fast, but the cool thing, we were working, you know, we never stopped working, we were doing our thing, um, so I really never had time to just let everything settle and think about like, how did this come about, how did things happen, you know, I'm here now and I'm just going at it, you know. Um, I'm stepping ground, so things are very real now, which is awesome. But uh, like you said, things were going, things went very, very fast, which is, you know, I'm not complaining, you know, because it's good. We're in a good spot now. Um, so how it started was uh, right after we talked about last time, you know, for my fight in Mexico. You know, I won that fight. And right now, of course, there was a lot of talks. You know, all of a sudden I have one more win in my, in my uh, under my name. So now all of a sudden we're thinking about the big stage, you know, we're thinking about the UFC. And um, we put our name down for UFC Fight Island. So we can, because I cannot come to the US due to visa issues and all the, the pandemic stuff. So the UFC is not really working hard to be, right now in that sense to bring uh, new fighters from other places just to give them visa because, you know, there is so many other fighters who are ready to go right away. Um, so we put our name down for the Fight Island. We were like, okay, uh, we are willing to take a short notice fight for Fight Island in case any 55 or falls through or even 70, you know? So we were kind of like, uh, playing, playing around with those two, 155 or 170. Um, so that didn't happen in the beginning of the year because that's when Fight Island happened and then all the other fights, you know, went to now UFC Apex and, um, so uh, all of a sudden, I was like, well, when is it going to be the next time that that they go back to UFC Fight Island? So maybe I can keep an eye in there. And so I never had in mind PFL. You know, I just didn't think that uh, PFL really would be interested in a fighter like me, for example, just because of uh, if you see the um, the fighters that they're always picking up, it's mostly UFC vets, people that have been around, you know, around that area. So I was like, okay, well, you know, good. Uh, it never was in my radar, to be honest. And... Um, all of a sudden, you know, my wife and I, we're getting so bored of our life back home in Grand Party. Everything is in a lockdown. All I'm doing is training. So we're getting exhausted from our lifestyle down there. It's just not enjoyable at all. There's no life to it. All we do is we wake up, I go train, I come home, she goes to work, uh, you know, we go, we work and we go back to train again. And that's every single day for a long time there. Nothing to do. Restaurants are all closed, um, you know. People are calling on each other for gatherings, which is dumb, you know. It, it, it was horrible. So we, my wife and I was like, you know what? We're not living life here. So we decided to take a trip. We, you know, borrow my mother and father-in-law's uh, RV, and we just started going around. So I was like, I started gym hopping. So I went down to Vancouver, and I was living out of an RV and then going to train wherever I can. So I was mostly training there with Cajun Johnson in Tresa, Vancouver. And then after that, uh, as well as Bibiana Fernandez in the... Um, uh, revolution and then after that i went down to um victoria for a week and when i come so I go in victoria for about a week week and a half i go back to vancouver again for one more week and then i was going to go back to maybe do a camp and then fight for lfa or something like that because i knew that you know i couldn't stay stagnant i need to somehow bring a little bit of money if i can and also you know keep keep moving the the, the ladder up right and we were planning to fight for LFA. LFA was very interested in us, apparently. So that was our aim. Maybe fight for LFA around May or for UAE Warriors. That's the, that was the other option. Go down in uh, Dubai and fight for, fight for UAE Warriors. 
around May or June. That was our plan. Um, as soon as I arrived, after Victoria arrived in Vancouver, I get a call. So this is one week before the PFL bubble starts. I get a call and say, hey, uh, we have an opportunity for you right now. And this is my coach telling me. We have an opportunity for you right now. And the opportunity is you get to be part of the uh, 2021 PFL bubble as an alternate. And I'm right away, I'm thinking, it's like, man, I don't want to be an alternate. Well, I didn't thought of that. The first thing that came to my head was the money because they were going to pay me, right? So I was like, well, I need money. So I'm not going to be getting paid for a while because I'm not fighting. And I was like, I need money. You know, this is going to be good money. Plus they're paying US money too. So I was like, okay, it's going to be good money. Um, it will, it will, it will allow me to live for a few months after that. So I was like, okay, well, you know, let's take it. I, I was very doubtful of it, to, uh, to be honest. I didn't want it because, you know, I was in a short notice for another big thing. And I was always kind of hoping that that was going to happen. And uh, my coach, my dad and Bill said, no, you have to take this. I talked to my wife and my wife is like, no, you should take it, you know, take it. And if uh, things don't give him, then, you know, well, it is what it is, right? But take it because it's an opportunity for you right now. You will get to make some money. And then as well, you actually get, you know, part of our contract was going to be uh, offered to actually enter the 20. Um, no, part of our contract was we were going to get a secure fight sometime this year. And I was like, okay, well, cool. We're going to get a secure fight plus be an alternate and make some money there. So I was like, well, let's take it. So we ended up taking it. I was very scared of it because, you know, like there was another big, th another big thing cooking on the side. And we took the opportunity, thanks to my coaches, to to push me and my wife as well to push me to take it. Um, you know, right away, I have to go all the way back to Vancouver, drive all the way back home to Grand Prairie, which is like around 17 to 19 hours in an RV. So we rush. We go all the way back. As soon as I get home, I need to get all my papers done, you know. So one, I need to get my passport done because my passport wasn't, uh, uh, how you say, it was already expired, right? Um, so I had to rush that in. Then I had to get all my medicals. You know, medicals in Canada takes long. It's not depends on where you live, right? I, I live in a small town, so yeah. whenever I do my medicals, it needs to my blood needs to be sent out to Edmonton, and then from Edmonton comes back. So it takes around like three to five days. So I was like, as soon as, as soon as I got there, I went and got all my blood done, and cool thing, everything came on time. So I got all my medicals done, which is awesome. Um, I had to leave one day before everybody else uh, to Ottawa to go and get my my passport stamp as well. So I can cross the border, and yeah, so it was very hectic. Then two days, so I, around a day before I left into to Ottawa, then to after come back into the bubble, I get a call and they say, okay, um, Johnny Cage is uh, Johnny Cage is out of the PFL uh, tournament, so you're in. So like you're now part of the 2021 PFL uh, season. And I'm like, heck yeah, let's do it. So I was I got very excited very fast. Because all of a sudden, from being an alternate, I was the main thing. You know, I was like, okay, now I'm part of the tournament. Now I'm fighting for, you know, for for a prize. Right? I'm fighting for not not even. I don't even care about the million dollars, to be honest. For me, it was just to be able to have fights and keep growing my name. Um, of course, the million dollars is there, so it's enticing. But at the same time, you know, for me, it's just like you know, I'm trying to reach the next level every single time for this sport. You know, I want to make it to the top. Um, so like, okay, all of a sudden, we're part of the 2021 PFL tournament. Now I'm excited, you know, now things are going. And there is so much going on on the side too. Because now also, I did not have a training camp. I did not, you know, I'm I'm like about 30 pounds overweight. So I'm like, oh man, like I got a, I got a boogie here. So, you know, things happen. We made things happen. And, uh, you know, it went the way that it went. And, you know, we won by split decision. I never want to leave the fight to the judges, but it is what it is. And, uh, and yeah, so now we're fighting Anthony Pettis. Yeah, I mean, that was yeah. my next question. I mean, you had, uh, I mean, you won your debut for the PFL. A short notice. It was a close fight, but but you got it done. And you, now you're in. You're part of the tournament. Now you get Anthony Pettis. Like, that is exactly what you were talking about. You know, you want to reach the next level. You're fighting a former UFC champion, uh, arguably the favorite to win the tournament, and you're headlining. Um, how awesome is that? And um, I guess, do you feel any more pressure knowing that you're the main, the, the main attraction on the evening? Um, there's always pressure, you know. Um, there's always. I, I think the pressure for me doesn't come down to so much. Oh man, I'm the, I'm the main thing now. You know, it, it's it's just another fight, to be honest. Yes, it's yeah. We're the main event now. If you start putting it that way, then you know you can add a lot of pressure. But for me, the pressure really comes down to myself. You know. I put a lot of pressure on myself just because I want to perform to the the best that I can. Like I said, my last fight, I felt very uh, how you say. 
I felt like I had more to give, you know, and whether I did or not, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but in my mind, I felt like I could have given more. So I was disappointed with myself, you know, just because I put a lot of pressure to myself and, um, you know, I did a lot of mistakes that I shouldn't have done. And well, it happened, what it happened. I learned from it. Now we're moving on to the next one and doing the best to not make the same mistakes. Right. So the pressure really comes on more of me putting that on myself, you know? Um, yeah, I'm feeling there's so many things you can take a pressure, uh, put pressure on this because yeah, or, you know, you're fighting a, a former UFC champion. Um, you're the main event. It's a big promotion, you know, like it's BFL. If you start really thinking about all the stuff, then you can, you know, start really driving yourself crazy. But at the same time, you know, for me, I'm excited to be honest. You know, this is what I signed up for. This is what I wanted. Uh, it's been a few years already that I've been looking for a spot like this, you know. Um, something that I always said in my career is that I don't, uh, I, I didn't fight enough in my career. Uh, because, you know, like just the way that things kind of spread out for my fight. But to be honest, it's, it's not that, I wasn't ready to fight. I was always ready to fight, but things happen, you know, like fi fights fell through, uh, somebody got injured. Um, I don't know, days before I was about to leave to fight, all of a sudden, you know, my opponent gets concussed and he cannot fight. So I was always scheduled to fight somebody, you know, almost every every two months, but things just didn't happen. So when the pandemic happened, I was a little bit, uh, you know, the pandemic was huge for me psychologically. It really helped me to become a little more aggressive and a little more to take risks because something that I really regretted in 2020 was like, I should have taken more risk. That's something that I, that I said to myself, I should have taken more risk before the pandemic happened. So as soon as after the pandemic, you know, when all these opportunities started to come in, I'm like, that's something that you said. You said that you should take more risk. Now the risks are in front of you. Take them all. And now, now whenever risk come on, like, let's freaking do it, you know, let's do it because, you know, we're excited. I mean, I don't want to live with regrets anymore. So after the pandemic, I decided, uh, the pandemic, I decided I'm going to take as many risks as I can to be able to reach to where I want to go. And, uh, and yeah, so this is one of, you know, PFL was one of them. I mean, my first fight was a very, very, I think probably one of the, I believe is the toughest fighter of, uh, of the 2021 lightweight division, to be honest. Uh, Roy Rajabov, I think he is the toughest fighter of the lightweight division for PFL. Um, now, when it comes down to skills, there's different, you know, there is, there, you can get into all of that, but I think he, to be honest, psychologically, um, the way he fights, the way he comes forward, never stops. He's just like a robot, you know, he keeps coming forward no, nonstop. So for me, I, even before PFL, I already was watching his fights. Well, not even before PFL, but I mean, when when I was looking at the, um, as an alternate, when I was looking at the uh, the fighters, I was studying them. I was like, okay, well, there is Anthony Perez. We all know Anthony Perez. There is uh, Clashers Clay. He's a boxer. You know, there is uh, Marcin Hill. He's a grappler. He loves, you know, he loves leg locks. There is, uh, you know, so I was checking each one of them to see, okay, if I replace him, you know, we kind of have an idea of who we're stepping in. And when I saw Lloyd Rajabov, I was like, okay, well, as long as I don't fight this guy, we're good to go. <laughs> so that's what I said, you know. As long as I don't fight with this guy, we kind of have a plan for everybody. And then turns out the first guy that I get to fight is Lord Rajabov. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess this is, it is what it is, and we're fighting him. So now we're fighting, uh, you know, Anthony Pettis. Like you said, there is pressure, but the pressure comes mostly from me to myself than from the outside to myself. The outside doesn't even bug me right now, to be honest. It's, um, I think it helped a lot, me, those having... The Tajikistan is bugging me a lot. Just kind of had to learn how to turn off that chip of the outside involving yeah. into me. <laughs> um, yeah. One of the things I wanted to ask too is last time we spoke, um, one of the things I, I emphasized was, was your relationship with your dad because it's not every day that you see um, a father as a coach. And uh, I guess what does it mean to the both of you to be able to share this experience together? I'm sure he's in the bubble with you and will be with you on yeah. fight night. Yeah, that's right. He's in the other room just right behind me here, I think. Yeah. So, um, two rooms, I believe. I oh, know he's somewhere here. Uh, anyways, so he's, it's different, man. You know, like, uh, oh, I think I know it's different, but I really don't see, I don't, I, I don't understand it. What's the difference to be honest. That's, that's what I'm going to say. I know it's different because I do see other people's relationship with their father, but, um, I grew up like this my whole life. So, you know, this is all I know. And, um, it's it's amazing i wouldn't want to change it i wouldn't want to give it up you know i love him being beside the cage with me and uh, i love having him as my, my mentor and my guidance you know like he's probably the reason why i'm here today too you know uh just psychologically because you know he pushes me every single time and he's always there for me and when he you know when i'm pushing myself 
he's the one that's kind of like lets me know. He's like, Alex, you know, you should probably, you know, enjoy things a little more. You know, you should uh, do this and do that. You know, like just find ways to enjoy yourself because you're overworking yourself. You know, I'm an overworker. Sometimes I work too much, but um, I, it's just the pressure that I put on myself, like I said. And having him just to be able to kind of mentor me while I go through that is very unique because I don't know what to say, you know, some other people may do it because of, uh, you know, they have something to take away from you. He's my father. So I already know from the get-go, there is nothing nothing to gain for him, you know. He does it just out of pure love, to be honest. So that's something that um, it's very uh, unique, you know, and um, it's a relationship. I wouldn't want to for anything in the world, you know, very thankful of it. Uh, I see, like I said, a lot of other fighters who struggle with their family, you know, just, you know, there's something in between and I'm I'm very blessed and lucky to have that, what I have. So I'm just thankful of it, to be honest. You know, I cannot say much of it, but I'm thankful. I know you also spent some time down at Syndicate MMA with uh, with John Wood and the, the team That's there. Right. What was that experience like? I love that, man. You know, John Wood is amazing. The team in Syndicate is amazing. You know, they all treated me so well uh, and, and they punched me hard too. So that I love that so much. <laughs> So they treated me well and punched me hard, and that was good. You know, that's what I need. So I need people that uh, that push me hard like they did, and as well as you know, the the feeling was not uh, it was not hard feelings. You know, you go sometimes in some other gyms and um, you both push the pace, and they take it personal, like you know, like there is something going on between you, you and them, and it's you no, know, it's just training, right? But uh, in syndicate, you know, I got along with pretty much most of them, so I you know it was good. I loved it so much. John treated me so well. He took care of me very well. And uh, he was already recommended to me before I even went to Syndicate. So it's not like I went uh, to him just because out of nowhere. So they already recommended me to go and train. at. Syndicate. So actually, uh, Coach Adam Zuzek already told me, hey, you should go and spend some time in Syndicate. So And as well as Coach Bill Mahou told me before a before, long time ago. And uh, all of a sudden, things gave him, you know, Atlantic. Um, when I was here in Atlantic City, PFL asked me if I can stay in the U.S., due to COVID restrictions. So it used to it'll be, a, be a lot easier for them to just keep their fighters in the US and um, had to decide where to go. So, you know, things gave him. I asked uh, my manager and coach Alan Zuchek if they can hook me up with uh, Team Syndicate. They reached out to John. John right, John right away welcomed me in and um, it was amazing. I loved it. And then uh, I'll ask a couple more and then I'll let you go. I know you're, uh, you're in the bubble and everything. So I don't want to take up too much of your time, but obviously, I'm a Canadian. You represent Canada. You talked about Grand Prairie. Uh, there's nothing out there. Uh, but uh, um, obviously, representing Canada, you're one of the only three people to, to be in the PFL representing that flag. And uh, I guess, what does it mean to you to, to represent both the Paraguayan flag and the Canadian flag in this tournament? It's very unique, you know, um, to be able to represent both because I consider myself both, to be honest. Um of course, I'm Paraguayan. I'm going to represent my blood from Paraguay. Uh, especially, they have nobody who represents them ever, right? So, you know, it's it's an honor for me to, to take that flag and represent as high as I can. And as well as Canada, because Canada is my home. You know, that my family is from there. My wife is from there. All my sponsors. So, the reason why I'm here today is because of Canada. And, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful to represent both. That's why I always walk out with both flags. And, uh, yeah, I'm very, very thankful to, to be able to represent uh, my nations, my countries, right? So it's, uh, yeah, it's, we're here and we're going to do it now. <laughs> All right. And then last question here. Um, what's your message for the fans? What can they expect from you on June 10th? And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a prediction. I don't like to predict stuff just because this is the fight game. It, you know, and I, I adapt, you know, I don't ever fight one way in one fight. As you can see my record, I have all type of finishes from decision to finish, submission, striking, all over the place, right? So all I can say is, you know, it's going to be a great fight. I adapt as the fight goes, and I'm going to do what I have to do to be able to win. And, uh, yeah, so all I can say is, you know, we're going to bring it to him. That's all I can say, man. So we're going to be there. <laughs> all right, man. Well, thank you very much for the time. I uh, I appreciate it, and uh, best of luck on June 10th.